Good morning, children. Y'all, welcome to Sunday school. I hope you had a lovely week. Before we go into this lesson, let's pray. Bow down your head and close your hands. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful for the past week, for the calm meeting, for everything that you have done for us, keeping us safe, providing for us, healing us. Lord Jesus, we are so, so grateful. As we go into this lesson, Lord, touch us, Lord. Save our souls. Bless us. Bless our mommy. Bless our daddy. At the end of this lesson, we all go home rejoicing. As the lame was rejoicing, receiving from you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Children, let's listen to this testimony from Nife and Ife. Flashes on my birthday. Thank God. Thank God for healing me. When I was little, I had rashes. Um, until 2021, God spared my soul and he um, healed me. Um, I, th I give God all the glory for healing me. Thank God. Praise God. I'm sure we are all blessed from that testimony. Before we go into our reading, let's take our memory verse from Nephi. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. The title of this lesson is The Miracle at the Gate. Say it, The Miracle at the Gate. The text of this lesson is taken from the book of, of Apostle, out of Apostle, chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. But we are only just going to read verses 3 to 8. And the reading is taken by victory. Acts chapter 3, verse 3. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple as an alms for and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said look on us five and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them six then Peter and silver and gold have I none but such as I have give to I thee in the in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk seven and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. 8. And he weeping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and weeping and praising God. Thank you, Victory, for that uh, reading. It was well, it's beautiful, well read. The story we have just read told us about Peter and John as they were going to the temple to pray. We were also told 
before that this story you heard that there's a lame man who has been lame from birth a crippled and the family every morning bring that layman to this gate of the temple watch the clip The gate is called the beautiful gate. But this fateful day, John and uh, Peter, as they were going to the temple, they saw this man begging for arms. Watch the clip. Arms? Anything to give? Alms? Look on us. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. Walk. Behold, the ma that was crippled from bed, crippled, couldn't walk, the ankle stretching up. He was strong, got up. He was praising God. He was happy, he was happy. Praising God, so happy. I'm sure those people around, they said they were amazed. Even some emotionally, that was so surprised, out of joy. Some must have been crying there. This brings us to that testimony that you heard before. The testimony told you they were healed. They were sick or something in their body and they were healed. And that thing cleared. When they pray, Jesus healed them. Mommy and daddy must have prayed. But Jesus is the healer. Is the perfecter. Jesus came to heal them. So today, if you have anything bothering you, Jesus will heal you. Peter haven't got his own power to do that. He was filled by the Holy Spirit, as Jesus has promised us, promised them. That same Jesus of last time is still same Jesus today. Is he healed that man through Peter. Miracle happened to that man. So if we are being prayed for, or some of daddy or grandma pray for us, or daddy pray for us, it's not them that heal you. It's Jesus through them, through that prayer, to heal you. Children, we have learned a lot of lesson from this story. If we can pray, if we pray, give yourself, say, Jesus, come into my heart, you will also have that miracle. Jesus, come into my heart today. Pray it. We've learned today that Jesus still heals. Does he still perform miracle? 
Yeah? Jesus still performed miracles? Yes. And you? Yes. Jesus still performed miracles. From the testimony you heard. Yes. From the community we also heard a lot of testimony. Jesus is still in that business of healing, performing miracles, giving. Ah, we are so grateful. So, children, if you have anything bothering you, homework, exam, anything, take it to God in prayer. And Jesus will answer you as he did to this man. God bless you. Activity ages 2 to 5. Draw a circle around what the layman asked Peter and John and what the layman received. Activity ages 6 to 8. First picture, color the picture that shows what the man did after he was ill and could walk. Second picture, color the picture that shows how the people felt when they saw the man walking and praising God. For next week lesson is lesson 12C. Tell the good news. Tell the good news. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Good morning, Answer Class. Welcome to our Sunday School. Our lesson today is ready for battle. Bible text is taken from Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 18. We shall read a few selected verses. Our friend is going to read those selected verses for us. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10, 11 and 18. 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 11. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Well done. God bless you. That was good reading. Put on the whole armour of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Boys and girls, I've got three items which I'm sure you are familiar with. The first one... sunglasses. I'm sure most of you wear sunglasses at one point to protect yourself from that scorching sunshine. Next item is the umbrella. Some of you might have used it when it's pouring, when it's raining, you need an umbrella. And even when it's hot, I know some of you do use an umbrella to protect yourself. Finally, helmet. I know most of you are into cycling and you need a helmet to protect that head. So, all this items we use them depending on the situation we have to have them to protect ourselves today we are going to learn about the armor of god which we all need once you are saved from your life of sin you will need the armor of God 
so that you are able to fight that battle, so that you are ready for the battle. Just like in our story lesson, Judah undertook that project, and it is through the project he undertook that he came to realize that it was symbolic to what is written in the Bible that as Christians we need the whole armor of God. So I'm going to use a, a picture of a soldier. I'm sure I'm sure that is what uh, Judah came up with. He came up with a similar picture of a soldier wearing different equipments. These are to protect him in the battle. So it is with us today in our lesson. God is going to teach us those things which we need as we walk with them. As we fight the unseen battle, the battle we are talking about is a spiritual battle. For the Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against forces of darkness, forces of the devil. Hence the need of uh, the full armor of God. As I have stated earlier on using this picture, the first thing we want to look at is the helmet. The helmet is needed. And the helmet of salvation is what we need. We need to be saved from the life of sin so that we have that relationship with our Savior, Jesus. Remember, we are all born sinners. We are all born with a sinful heart. So we need to ask Jesus to come into our heart and save us and wash us from all those naughty sins, from all those sins which we have done. We also need the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. The word of God is important to boys and girls. That is why, as a Christian, you need to be reading the word of God every day. The Bible is the word of God. So that when you come across situations, you will be able to say the word of God. When your friends want you to rebel against your parents. The word of God, which you read every day, you will say, I'm sorry. My Bible says, obey children, obey your parents in the Lord. We need the word of God. We need loins, get about with truth. That is a belt. You know a belt, it ties everything together. The belt in this picture of a soldier, it represents the truth. You know, when you have got the truth, God's spirit will dwell with you. We need the truth. You know, in this world, there are so, there's a lot of false teachings. There's a lot, a lot of information around. But today, God is instructing us that we need truth. That belt of truth is what we need. God will help us to have that in our lives. So that when false teachings or false information comes our way, the Lord will raise a standard on us, the standard of truth. We need 
the breastplate of righteousness. We need to live a holy life. You know, it is a blessing to have a breastplate of righteousness. I know as youngsters, you might find this a challenge, but God will help you. Sometimes there you are from school, you pass through a shop and your friends say, oh, we love those sweets, but we don't have money. Let's just steal a few and put them in our pockets. When you have that breastplate of righteousness, you will be able to say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm a Christian. I won't do that. I won't steal. And God will bless you for that. It is only that breastplate of truth which you need, which will help you to do so. We also need a shield. The shield is our faith, our belief. We need to believe in the word of God as safety people, as people who are righteous. We need to believe that whatever comes our way, God is able to deliver us. And he does. I know a number of you, you have at one point fallen sick. And the ministers have prayed on you. And God, through his mercy, he has healed you. Isn't that so? Yes, he does. Once you have got that faith, he will heal you. He is your healer. You believe the word of God. That's what it says. And that has been the portion of many of us. So we need faith. Our faith will protect us from all what we come across. From bad things that come across our way. We want to hold on to the faith that our God will deliver us from whatever situation. We need our feet to be showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What does that mean? It means you should be ready to tell the news that Jesus saves. You, need, you should be able to preach to your friends the good news, the love that God has given to you. God has shown us so much love for saving, by saving our souls. He died for us in the cross of Calvary. So we need to share that good news to others, to our friends, to our peers, as we go along with life. Spread the good news that Jesus saves. God will help you. God will be with you. And as you live righteously, I know it's not easy, but thank God for the sword, which is the word of God. He tells us that he will be with us always. It is true. It is only through prayer, through consecrating our lives daily, every day, every minute, wherever we are. Boys and girls, it is a good thing to serve the Lord while we are still young. God will be with us up to the end. You know, at the end of this life, he will take us to heaven. Wouldn't you want to be saved? If you are saved, put on that armor of God. Put on the helmet, the shield, the sword, the belt of righteousness. And God will be with you all the time. He will protect you. With the full armor of God, he will protect you. The word of God is so powerful. All these different items which we have identified, they will protect our heart, our mind, our soul. And at last, we will make it to heaven. Would you want to invite the Lord into your heart? You better do so. That is what Judah found out 
after his uh, project. And that is what the word of God is reminding us today, that we need to put that armor all the time, all the days of our life, wherever we are, God will bless you. Our statement reads, I will put on the whole armor of God. That's the end of our lesson. Our activities. Ages 9 to 12. There are 20 words in the word found. Circle each word as you find it. Our next week's lesson is Lesson 103 titled Reaching the Goal. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for giving us this assurance that we need to put on the whole armor of God and indeed you will fight our battles. Help us as boys and girls. Help the primary powers. Write these lessons in our hearts. Help us to live them and we praise you forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye.